it's been a long day traveling for both Abby and I. <laughs> Hasn't a, long, it? a long day. It's been a long day. Yeah. What I thought was going to be a really quick and easy trip up to Ohio has turned has turned into more than a 12-hour stint of traveling, and we just got very unlucky. And the plane that we were taking out of Pensacola had some kind of mechanical issue; they couldn't leave, and we sat on the plane for a while. Then they finally made us get off of it and then they said they had to send another plane up there from Atlanta and we didn't leave Pensacola until I think 12:30 maybe somewhere around 12:30 our flight was supposed to leave at 5:50 a.m. I've had her up since like 3:30 this morning yes he has and, it, and right now it's um, 7:18 so we we're in Columbus now we finally made it uh, even when we got to Atlanta it was a fiasco up there um, the plane got delayed like a whole hour up there because the weather up here in the north is always wet and rainy it feels like I'm in Washington State right now but I'm happy to be here Abby's happy to be here Very happy. I don't think she's ever been to this area before and she loves to travel she's been traveling her whole life so she was really excited to come up here so we're uh, just leaving Columbus Columbus Ohio and we are headed east directly to Zanesville, Ohio to meet up with John Saunders and all of the YouTube guys and all of the viewers for the NYC CNC Open House. So very excited about it. Um, I'm excited that we're actually here because if it wasn't for Abby, I think I would have given up this morning after the way they were treating us on the phone and saying that uh, we don't have any seats available to get you up there today. It was going to be like a tomorrow thing. I'm like, that's not going to work. We, the event's tomorrow, and I'm totally missing out on hanging out with the guys today. You know, I wanted to be with the boys today and hang out in the shop and, and screw around. And they totally took that whole half a day away from me. So we're headed to Weasel Boy Brewer, Weasel Boy Brew Company, uh, right there on the river in Zanesville. And I think, I think everybody is there now. Uh, if they're not, they're probably on their way, the people that's coming in. So that's where we're headed. We're headed to Weasel Boy to uh, finally meet everybody and probably have a beer or two, maybe a pizza. Um, yes, a pizza. Uh, yeah, Abby says pizza. <laughs> and she, yes, loves, pizza. she loves pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just ready to get there and stretch our feet. You know, it's just been a long day. So I'm, I'm going to take the camera with me and this time and try to get some cool behind the scenes shots, you know, show you guys Weasel Boy and uh, where we like to hang out there in Zanesville. So I hope to get some really cool shots to share with you on this trip outside of the, the shop itself. So stay tuned and we'll, be, we'll bring you right back. All right, guys, we made it to Weasel Boys. There it is behind me, pretty neat place. I think it was a, some kind of old factory that they had uh, re remodeled into some businesses here in downtown. Look who's just like stumbling around the sidewalk out here. <laughs> oh, oh, Jimmy DeResta over there. <laughs> Here's the brew tanks. The tap room. Looks like the right place. <laughs> oh, we got the proper hat. You made it! <laughs> What's up? Hey, man. How you doing? What's up? Nice to meet you. We finally made it. It's been a long day. <laughs> We made it though. Okay. Hey, okay. thanks to Abby, we made it. Long drive, right? Yeah, it's been a long. I'm <laughs> sorry for. What do you want to drink? Uh, a beer. Alright, it's time to get.
get a beer. So guess where we're at? <laughs> we're over here in John's shop. This, uh, it's really early Saturday morning. I don't know, probably getting close to about 7 o'clock. It's just me and John and uh, Noah over there. I just thought I would get a quick, quick little shot of, of the shop here before it starts getting rowdy, getting filled up. There's vendors and some of the other guests are going to start showing up here really soon. Probably within the hour, people start coming and setting things up. So the, uh, the shop has grown quite a bit in a year's time. He's got a lot of new machines. Um, you know, the big one right there, the Haas, the VM3. But he's got a bunch of manual machines over here, too. I haven't even seen yet. I haven't even walked over there. So I was going to just kind of walk around and get a couple shots of his, like, new equipment before everybody starts coming in. So let's do that. I got my coffee. And let's go for a little walkabout. <clears throat> so there's his new, there's his new big boy, the new Haas. All right, so that's going to be his, that's his new workhorse there. That's work lights that are LEDs. Yeah, they look like they probably are. <laughs> They used to have a halogen, and apparently you would just sit here and cook underneath the machine. <laughs> they put out a little heat, huh? Of course, we got his, uh, his Tormox that's been tagged last year. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it, was year, uh, it was a year ago. Yeah. It was a year ago. We put them stickers on there. Right. Yeah. Now, this is the new one. I think he just got this, I don't know, a month or two ago. The 770. Let's see his new old school machines. Yeah, this is uh, this thing was born between you and me, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, so uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Well, so I, I, Have you? I don't uh, think so. It's like a Cinti Mill. I think it was different brands. A Cinti Mill. Two hundred five. I actually had the book on it. I'm not really sure. It's uh, <clears throat> I tell you this. This reminds me of the. Uh, the old mill that we had before. Have uh, dovetails? Yeah, it, this was this setup right here, but Cincy Mill. I'm still thinking it's a Cincinnati, but. But uh, what do you think that is? I have an idea. <sighs> Offhand, I don't know. We got a number four Morse taper attached to it, and you got. And it's pretty pretty big. Yeah, that's three 50 taper arbors on there. I mean, I mean, you know, that's got some. I don't know. Is it a movie prop, you think? <laughs> I don't know, man. Best thing that I can come up with is some sort of an adjustable diameter OD stabilizer. Okay. Stick it in a lathe, and you can push something up. But it doesn't have wear marks that you would expect on your contact points. Yeah. And it's got those faceplate adjustments. I don't know. Okay. I'm, I can see it now that... Uh, Somebody made that for some kind of special holding system. Right. So you can adjust those for different, maybe your face is out or something. Isn't that funny? I don't know. Sorry, I wish I could give you a better answer. It's a fun, it's like a fun, uh, <laughs> yeah. what is that tool? So yeah, they loaded you up, man. You got all kind of, all kind of tooling. Uh, so here's the lathe. So I got you on. Yeah, we're going to come over here and do some, do some four jaw work later today. Okay. The closing, 17 inch. Yep. Is that an 80 inch bed? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Well, How's it run? I mean, you've been using it? Yeah, um, I have not used it uh, much at all. Jared made our cannon on it though. Okay. Um, you know, it was, it was used at a factory here in town and then they didn't use it for about 10 years. And they threw like a tarp kind of over it, but it sat next to a weld grind table. Mm -hmm. So the thing was just caked yeah. in, uh, in that. So uh, bearings, I think, sound good. The clutch probably won't last a whole nother, you know, another 10 years, but um, r runs well. It, 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 the ways feel good. The motion, the machine, the, you know, the motion of it feels good. Um, I actually really like it. I like the size of it. Okay. 
Because well, that's a that's a that's a nice size lathe to have in your shop, man. You know, you can do a lot of stuff over here on that machine. Fine. And you still want the 192? Yeah, I'd like to have a 30 by 192 or or bigger if I could. But 30 inch is a good size to uh, a good size to use. It doesn't feel over oversized. Okay. You know, it's like you can still use it every day and be comfortable yeah, with yeah. it. So I, that's what I'd like to find. I'd, I'd love to find like a 30 inch pacemaker, they American pacemaker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They made them in many sizes. So there's this new Okamoto surface grinder. That's a big grinder, man. 16 by 32. Yeah. I've been messing with the chuck, learning. Um, we got about a foul run out, which is either due to me not dressing the chuck correctly, which I think is part of the problem, but I also, um, I talked to talking to, to Stan Zinkowski and a couple mm. other guys. I need to pull the chuck off and look at what you know, if any rust has formed between okay. the bottom of the chuck and the top of the table. May not have to grind it, which I, I'm, I'm nervous about what I do on it. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. But we should be able to get that dead fly. That's cool, man. Do you have, uh, have you got work yeah, like lined been, up for that? We've been running parts on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would assume then the, the one thou that you're getting is within tolerance of what you're. I hope to like it better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think anybody that runs the surface grinders want. Wants that yeah. tenth. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. A lot of you got you a biax. Yep, I did buy that. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, I've missed out on a couple of those that come across like the pages, and, and it's like, boom, somebody somebody buys it for you. Cool. All right, so there's uh, there's the machines. Now he just added this guy right here. This is new uh, plasma table, right? Yeah. Uh, repurposed it for today for workshops. <laughs> I see that. It looks like you got some flat screens on it. This is a, um, what was it called? J uh, JD Square. Square. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Five by 10. There's Judd. Hey, Judd. He's saying hello, too. <laughs> you excited for today, What do you think? Could be. You're going to have about five or 600 people here today to hang out with. It's almost like he knows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He knows something's up. Somebody's cannons over here. Is that one yours? Yeah. So we, uh, I knew I couldn't beat guys like Duresta and, <laughs> and uh, Bollinger on, on machining creativity. So I thought I'll fight them with a different battle. So we've got ours automated on pan tilt and a rotational platform. And I put a little laser in the bore. It's just sitting there with some, some hot glue. Yeah. It'll shoot a laser on the wall so we can have people trying to aim on a target. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. So it'll rotate it too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's neat. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, so we just turned a cam in there and put a nylon bushing over it. Oh, nice. Now, did you machine all these over on the uh, on the Tormox? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Jared did the, um, this on the Colchester, the pausing, and then yeah. the rest of this on the Tormox. You know, whenever I seen the pictures of this, the cannon part of it, it looked way bigger than... <laughs> it, it looked like three times as big as that. Well, so. uh, I don't know where they are. Bollers is huge. Oh, it is? Yeah. Um, we'll go. We'll go check it out. They got some. They, this is a project that they all been. Uh, a bunch of the guys have been working on. So, John's doing his little Arduino stuff with it. It's pretty cool. That's uh, that's your new iron worker right there. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Fifty-five ton iron worker. I love those. I'd love to have one of those one day. It is. For doing flat bars and uh, angles and stuff like that, man, it's so quick, isn't it? Well, and we used on the round hole or the round. Yeah, the here. punch. And then. Um, and then the punch scene chasing itself. Like yeah. when we were welding up that um, yeah. um, roller thing, you just throw a hex, hex punch in there, it's mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, exactly. Well, that kind of stuff, fab work, man, that's what those things are made for. I've always liked the uh, piranha, too. You ever yeah. seen those? Those are great for uh, you know nibblers. Mm -hmm. This one has the auxiliary uh, hydraulic line too so if you get something se separate you could just wheel up and use the pumps which I think is nice yeah that's great well man you're getting the uh, you're getting the shop filled up here's uh you got a lot of stuff in here now oh is that that's Jim's cannon right yeah. there yeah. Jim Bollinger from do right fab man he did a good job on that right? he did all the woodwork and everything too huh Freighted it up here, and they uh, yeah. they made him classify it. So when I got the bill of lading from the guy, he said Civil War artifact. <laughs> oh no, crap! Yeah, that's cool. Looks like he's already fired it. Yeah, that looks nice, man. 
Well, I didn't show the drill press. I like that. Little radial arm drill press. Thanks. India. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Never gets old. Yeah, that's a that's way better than on my K and T having to loosen it up with a wrench and hit it with a with a copper hammer. That's pretty cool, man. Well, I like it. Congratulations, John, you. man. You're doing you're doing awesome. I appreciate you're, it. You're kicking ass over here. I like seeing the new Haas. It's uh, it's, yeah, it's been a fun machine. Oh yeah. You really do have to learn the machine, though. You know. Yeah. I don't know if you find that with like the manuals, but you kind of learn what is good at the sweet spots, how to run it. That's cool. All right. Sounds like getting some visitors in here. All right, so we're probably about 15, no, 10 minutes away from opening the doors for everybody to come in. So it's pretty active in here now. I thought I'd do another quick walk around and just kind of see what's going on. And I'll try to get some more video as the day progresses. So you'll probably see some familiar faces in here. Hi, Adam. <laughs> I'm looking at the mic. Yeah. That's cool. A little ceremonic. It, it, it improves the audio? Oh, yeah. Is yeah, it, it helps stereo? Out. Uh, I believe so. I don't know. I won't want to tell you a lie. But yeah, Dawes is going to do some laser alignment, I believe, right? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah, look, yeah. look forward to that later. <laughs> this close. I'm 79 channel. There's Jim Bollinger from the Do Right Fabrication channel. Doing a little walk around, huh? Here's all the Saunders products. He's got a nice display set up here now. Say hi, guys. Hi, how's it going? Got a little dog thing. What's up, guys? All right, they that spot it. I think they're getting ready to open the doors and let everybody in. Just get all your jaws on the uh, on the same line as a reference. And I know that's gonna be like two and one eighth, so I come in here with this. And it's like two and a quarter. This one's two and a quarter, so I'll just do like a quarter turn there. It's a little tight. And a quarter turn on that one. Try to keep them the same. And that puts me right here about two and one eighth. And same thing with that. So whenever you're uh, adjusting the jaws, I'll just do, you know, like a quarter turn or a half a turn, go all the way around, or do 180 out if you've got two jaws that are a little further apart. And move it over. There's your high, there's your low. Loosen that one and snug that one. And you just keep working highs and lows. So I'm kind of predicting the movement of the indicator a little bit. I'm kind of predicting that whenever I make my movement. So that's high, that's low. So I'm going to loosen that one up some. I'm going to go 180 and snug down. And now we move to the other two jaws. Well, another reason I like to use the four jaws is I don't like taking them off. They're there, so it's not worth my time to take that off and put a three jaw on when I can, just, I can already have it indicated. I will. I probably take it back out. and already dialed it. Quite close, Huh? Just the last day of my visit up here in Ohio with John, and we're back out here on the. Saunders family farm just just giving it a visit and uh, we brought Abby with us and, and uh, John's just showing us around and looking in the uh, his uh, grandfather's shop and the barn over here really neat places to, to just go look around and see but we brought the guns again and we're gonna shoot off a couple of them so John's he's on the mule and getting ready to go set a target up <laughs> got his targets in the back there. Here we go set a couple targets up and, and shoot a couple guns. I think Abby's going to get it on the shooting action this time too. 
but we're just enjoying our last day up here in Ohio. We, we actually leave out in the morning, uh, Monday, tomorrow, and we're just having a look, relaxing day, hanging out with John and his family. Been having a great time. So we're down in the basement of the Saunders family farmhouse. It's really cool. I just wanted to get a quick shot just to kind of show what it looks like down here. We just spent a, like an hour up in the, the very top floor looking at just very, very old antiques and books and furniture from the mid 1800s. This used to be an apple orchard. And then there's a, you said this is the boiler room? They used to have a big, uh, yeah, steam powered furnace, boiler furnace that would heat the house. Yeah. He took it out when I was in high school. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's what they have now. There's the, yeah. the hot water heater. Hot water heater. The, uh, the house has been renovated and they rent like uh, half of it out. You said it's like 7,000 square foot here? Yeah. It's about, yeah, it's a big house, but. Built in 1850. Eight, built in 1850, John says. This is really cool. This, uh, the basement there. There's a door that they open to uh, get the tractors and stuff out. Just unbelievable the really old relics that are in this house that are just in beautiful condition. Nice. Hit low. Just miss it to the right. That wind, dude. Yeah. Wind right now. Shaky. There you go. Awesome. Not too bad. I'll tell you, it's windy, so it was pushing me around a little bit. Yeah. It's still a lot of fun, though, yeah. just like last year. Awesome. Incredibly <laughs> hot. Yeah, so just keep your left hand. You're right handed. I'm right handed. Yeah, so keep your left hand there. Left hand there? Where my hand is. Yep, right there. And you can go ahead and kind of put your cheek up to here, and you should see a red dot. Okay. You see the red dot? I do. Yeah, so that should be pretty much bullet goes where the dot is. Okay. Um, two things we need to be careful about. One is we've got a tractor up high. Yep. So just be careful because the gun might kick up a little. Okay. I don't want you to jerk and hit a second shot. Okay. And then if I say cease fire for some reason, just stop shooting. I will. Um, so I'm going to put this in. And now when you're ready, go see this little tab here? Uh, push yes. that toward the ground. Okay. It's going to uh, put a round into the chamber. Okay. The gun is then hot and when you pull the trigger, it will shoot. And every time you pull the trigger, it will shoot again. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. You hit low. There you go. Hit low. Nice and easy. Just barely squeeze that trigger. Hit low. There you go. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Give me one more. There you go. Yeah. Um, nice job. That's awesome. Hey, what do you think about that? That's awesome. <laughs>
<laughs> Ab's gonna finish off the mag. Just a little right. <laughs> That's it. Nice job, dude. What do you think? It's awesome, man. It's all. It's always a lot of fun shooting these things. Hey, thanks for bringing us out. Awesome. I asked Adam if he wanted to shoot, and he said, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I said, anything you want to shoot? And he said, I want to shoot that 44 again. Got to shoot the 44, man. We'll take a couple steps up. Kick to it, man. Yeah. Step up a step up another. Uh... Oh, I ain't got it today, man. There you go. Just left. Oh man. Just, hey, you you got me. Just <laughs> like, one out of six, dude. Have fun. It's yeah, awesome, man. Hey. Yeah. Like uh, thanks for bringing us out, man. It's always it's always fun to come out here to the Saunders family farm and shoot a little ammunition. Ended up being a beautiful day. It is. It's a nice day. We had a little bit of rain yesterday at the open house, but it's beautiful today. A little bit chilly. We woke up and it was 43 degrees. <laughs> May <laughs> Crazy <seven>. for May. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so that's about it. We're about to head into town and have some dinner with the family. So I think that's going to be about it for, uh, for the Ohio trip. Cool. All right. <laughs>